And weeks after President Trump demanded that America's shuttered houses of worship be allowed to reopen, new outbreaks of the coronavirus are surging through churches across the country where services have resumed. More than 650 coronavirus cases have been linked to nearly 40 churches and religious events across the United States since the beginning of, beginning of the pandemic, with many of them erupting over the last month as Americans resumed their pre-pandemic activities, according to a New York Times database. Charles Odiziru Abangu is an engineer and consultant, joins us from Texas in the U.S. to give his uh, quick insight. Good evening, sir. Hi, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Is it right to assume that the reopening of churches in America has played a role in the continuous increase in numbers of positive cases? <laughs> um, I wouldn't want to say um, that is the case. I would want to differ a bit because um, the markets are open, shopping complexes are open, and um, I will be speaking basically um, leveraging on what I know from where I worship because um, ever since uh, we went into phase two, um, in my location here, we kind of um, are allowed to get to church. And um, the social distancing in church is um, evident. It's well spaced out. Everyone is maxed up. And we have cameras together with... Um, um, temperature, automatic temperature sensors monitoring the whole environment. And because of um, um, this uh, meeting today, this uh, interview today, I had to deliberately ask a question from the leadership of the church. I said, are you guys still um, communicating with um, Centers for Disease Control, monitoring what is happening and um, getting up-to-date information? And they told me yes. And I asked the question, what... In fact, I asked the same question you're asking me now, yeah. And he told me from um, the statistics given to them that the infection is coming up from people who have been, um, you know, kind of exposed in beaches, um, um, bars, restaurants and all that, that they've not had one person linked to a church. That, I mean, that was the um, response I got. Yeah. So based on that, I wouldn't want to say um, the reopening of churches have caused this spike. Because even in the midst of this pandemic, we've had, um, of course, not without a cause, we've had the Black Lives Movement um, protests yeah. going on across the nation. I think it's um, kind of um, calming so, down now. Yeah. But, would you but say that's we shouldn't, I wouldn't be quick to point to churches because um, there is no church currently that I know across, this, um, across the United States. But I'm not everywhere. I can only speak for where I am. Yeah. that are operating at 100% capacity. So how I think it will be most unfair for us to link that to the churches okay. in total. Yeah. That's my position. Would also like to say um, good evening to Olu Osha as a lawyer and a writer. We're going to be getting to you uh, also in a, in a few uh, seconds. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Mr. Hello, thank you for having me. Okay, can you hear welcome. me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. We're, we're going to be with you in a, in a second. Um, uh, having attended church, uh, of course, our first guest, having attended church yourself, how effective do you think the measures were um, that were taken to prevent the spread of the virus? The measures were quite extensive, um, extensive to the extent that um, just like we have in the airports, barriers um, to restrict where you're walking, true. Yeah. Um, the conveniences are shut. Um, coffee points are closed down. Um, we have to make bookings um, before we attend church so that they know when they get to the number. And once they get to that number, you are unable to book again. Of course, if you can't make it for one service, you can make it for the next service. So that's um, a situation whereby there are multiple services, um, an average of one hour, 30 minutes. Everyone comes in with his mask. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we have temperature sensors, we have cameras. Yeah. I want to believe the cameras are for um, accountability, especially towards um, government, because, I mean, the state, um, you know, kind of is, um, you know, the state, they're, they're trying to implement kind of a strict reopening protocol. So that has been the experience from 
what I've seen um, attending church in the past uh, okay. weeks. All right. Thank you very much, Charles. Uh, hold on. Um, Olu, let's bring you in here. There's a lot of people who are irate about the threatened revocation of student visas where the courses are currently fully online. However, do you think that there is a rationale to the president's recent policy? Um, well, we can take a look at this from um, two angles. One of them is, does the president actually have the authority to um, require that uh, F1 students, uh, F1, F1 international students uh, actually attend in-person uh, classroom instruction? So we actually see that uh, President Trump is merely pivoting on um, pre-COVID-19 uh, rules uh, concerning uh, the issuance of F1 international student visas, yeah. which require that um, students attend classes, in-person classes, uh, in, in, or, in order for international student status to be present in the United States. However, in terms of the rationale, uh, we can see that schools that have transitioned uh, to online instruction or decided to use a hybrid, that's uh, in-person instruction or virtual uh, classrooms, are merely responding to uh, an unprecedented uh, crisis. We're in, a, in the midst of a pandemic that's ravaged America. Uh, yeah. We've already experienced over almost 140,000 uh, deaths. And so this is an ad hoc measure that the schools are taking. It's temporary until there's a vaccine. Uh, the nation's leading vaccine, uh, the nation's leading infectious diseases expert who's on the uh, White House uh, COVID-19 task force, uh, Dr. Fauci, has uh, suggested that we should have a vaccine uh, ready by the end of the year, if not um, sometime in the spring of 2021. So this is temporary. Um, it's not. It's a temporary um, uh, remedy by the schools to mitigate uh, deaths and protect the health of their uh, university community, which includes uh, aging professors and students who may have underlying illnesses. So um, they are they are members of vulnerable groups uh, to the COVID-19. So it's somewhat uh, a knee-jerk reaction, and it's typical of okay. uh, Donald Trump. Okay, um, I, I was hoping that I could also ask a few more questions and you know extend this conversation, but we're we're you know very very tight on time. So I would like to say a huge thank you to um, um, Olu Osha and of course uh, Mr. Charles. Thank you very much for being a part of our conversation this evening. We hope to speak with you again. Remember to stay safe. Thank, thank you very much. much.